So in this lecture, uh, I'm gonna walk you through uh, uploading files to NanoHub. This would be, oh yeah. And I, I should remind people before we start that we are live streaming to YouTube and recording. And those will be available afterwards. But I'll walk people through uploading files to NanoHub, uh, specifically zips and how to unzip them inside NanoHub. That will be useful later on if we want to do a more complex demo that would be too much to start from zero during the class. The demo that I will make, we will begin from zero. So, First, if people could download that file, um, believe the link should be there a few times. And we're gonna get started. So as I said, I'm gonna walk you through uploading to NanoHub and I will also show you how to make all of these pretty plots. So you can have time series of uh, cell populations, for instance, or you could have a scatter plot that is only for this time step. For instance, how much nutrients did your cells eat up? And you can also do histograms and such. And uh, Compass also allows you to create a custom heat map for your cells uh, to make data visualization e easier. So first is to download that file. You have the QR code there. If somebody else could post it again to chant, it would be nice. And the way we upload it to NanoHub is a bit strange because we are pushing the limits of NanoHub in this workshop. So the way we will do it is first uh, come to your dashboard, which you can click on logged in there or dashboard or the NanoHub icon there and go to all tools and search for Jupyter with a Y. And we want to launch the Jupyter notebook here. It's a good idea to place a heart next to the two. That way it's gonna be here in favorites later on. So it's gonna be easier to access. Then this should bring you to a page like this and click on launch tool. And after a few moments, uh, this is where uh, this, this is what you be presented. Uh, so here, um, place. Okay. So in here in Jupiter, there is a upload button here at the top. Let me pass this line. So there is a upload here. We just need to click there, navigate to where you saved the zip file. Um, and to see the search bar here, you have to go to all tools under my tools. And it's Jupyter with a Y and you want the Jupyter notebooks. I, I realized that there are several here. So, Notebook one. So after you have it open, you click upload, you go to where you have your zip saved and you select the file you want to open. It's actually not yet uploaded. It's here and you have to click that second upload button again and it's gonna be somewhere in here in alphabetical order or however this is organized. So again, um, from the dashboard, go to all tools, Jupyter with Y, Jupyter notebook, 
you'll see something like this after opening it. And then this after launching. Oh, you have time. Then upload. Dashboard, all tools, check there. Launch it. Upload. Select the file you want to open or upload in this case. And uh, yeah, this is relevant only for the ones of us that are using Nanohub. If you're doing it locally, you don't need to bother with this part of the exercise. Oh, let me go again. Dashboard. All tools. Jupyter with Y, Jupyter Notebook, Launch, Upload, select the file, open, then upload again. Now, the next step is to actually open CompuSol now. And again, that's in the dashboard. In this case, search for CompuSol 3D, all one word, and open CompuSol 3D v4 main tool. Let me make that easier. So launch that too. Okay, so there are quite a few people that need more time. Uh, it, uh, yes, it has to be Compuso 3D. Um, and it's best that you use V4 main tool. There are a few others that you could use. The thing is, is that there are some, uh, there are some tools that are old that won't have the functionality needed to unzip. And again, I recommend putting in a heart to favorite in the CompuSo afterwards. But now that you are in CompuSo, this is my screen. What we want to do you have to upload a zip file, not a Jupyter file. But uh, so this is Jupyter, it's not Delurium, which is also Jupyter. So that's another thing. So the notebook here, after you have it launched, upload there, select file open, upload again. And after you've done that, you open CompuSelf for main two, which is this link. And what we will do is open Twedit, which is CompuCell's 
mono editor software. Which you can do either on this icon here of a piece of paper and pen or uh, here, file start to edit. That brings up another window, and this is pretty much just as having a program open on a desktop. We have two windows, one with CC3D players and one with to edit. And I may be going a little bit fast, but this is not the most important part of the lecture. And again, the whole process is opening Jupyter Notebook here, launch it. So this is the link to the Jupyter tool as well. Make things easier. Launch it, upload select the file you want to upload, open and upload. And after that's uploaded, we go to the CompuCell tool, which is this link. And same, same deal. That link will bring you here. You launch the tool. And after the tool is launched, you can launch to edit either with that piece of paper and pen or file start to edit. And if you are using, uh, if you're doing the workshop locally on your machine, you don't need to do anything right now. Yeah, Jupyter is only to upload the file. Uh, as I said, um, we are pushing the limits of NanoHub uh, in this workshop. Uh, NanoHub was, NanoHub doesn't have a direct way, way for regular users to upload stuff. So we have to kind of trick NanoHub into allowing us to upload. And again, Jupyter is only for the upload. And you need to download the zip. You don't need to extract the zip locally um, if you are uploading it to Jupyter, uh, because if you extract it locally, you're gonna have to upload each of the files separately. Then inside Jupyter, which is only for the upload, hit upload, select a file, open, and this upload that shows next to the file. And then we will unzip it in with uh, CompuCell. Yes. Yeah, people who are running in their own computer, not using NanoHub, again, you don't need to worry right now. And after the upload, you come here, the CompuCell before main tool. Again, the steps for Jupyter on NanoHub. I'm not running Jupyter locally. Uh, yes, it's compatible with 425, even though there may be a, an error message, right? But it's compatible. And a warning message, actually. So on Jupyter, that upload there next to the new for new file. Go to where you saved that zip. Select the zip and open the 
UI is going to be different depending on your operating system. And then you have to confirm the upload here. So upload there to actually select the file and then upload here to do the upload. Huh. Crashing on Max is new. Ah, there we go. Afterwards, we come to the CC3 main tool. And Okay, so people have caught up, seems like. So after you have the main tool, click either here, the paper with the pen, or here, uh, start to edit. And that will, well, start to edit. And again, this is just like being on desktop with more than one program open. And here on Twedit, what we will do is come here to CC3D project. Then we'll open cc 3 project, which is this up arrow with a plate under it, which is the same symbol there. So clicking there would also work. So file start to edit here. Um, then come here to to edit and hit either this button or CC3 project, project, open CC3 project. Start to edit. open project. And then we you have to go to your user here um, and select the um, zip file that you uploaded, which in my case was this one. And CompuCell can just open zip files. It will extract the zip and open the, the files. Uh, we're going to see this warning and uh, yeah, this is just a warning. You don't need to worry about it. Then it should be here under phone. Where is phone? Phone simulation here. And that's it for uploading and unzipping. So, Again, open to edit, select the zip, just say okay for all the warnings. In my case, it didn't let me say okay because the folder was already there and it's gonna unzip the file. There. Then we can open the simulation by going where it was unzipped and selecting the .cc2d file. Sorry, just let me break in for one second. Team members, if you are available to help somebody in a breakout room, please send me uh, chat message so that I know that you're available to help. And I promise the rest of the the rest of the lecture is actually easier than this. So the CC3D file huh, uh, should only appear after you unzip. I'm going to guess that you already have unzipped. 
So in my case, it was actually doubly nested inside the simulation and the CC3 should be next to simulation there. Hmm. Weird. Uh, wonder. Well, but at least you got it to unzip, which is the important part of this exercise. We're not actually going to use it for the rest of the lecture. Uh, what we are going to do the, for the rest of the lecture is um, I'm going to relaunch the pool in the meanwhile. Very weird. Yeah, and NanoHub is weird sometimes. Um, the rest of the lecture, we are going to build a, the simulation I had you upload from scratch. And it's actually the simplest simulation you can do on CompuCell. So I promise you, the rest of the lecture is easier than this part. So what we are going to do now, and now this exercise is for everyone, those running on NanoHub, and otherwise is we are going to start a new simulation here. So with Twedit open, we are gonna come to CC3 project and select new CC3 project here at the top. And this is gonna bring up the simulation wizard, which is not rendering right for me. Okay, cool, just needed to drag down. So first things first, uh, the default directory is this, where CompuCell is installed on NanoHub. If you try to use that directory, NanoHub will complain, and you won't be able, able to do anything, actually. So first thing is to select your user here. So browse and your user. If you're doing it locally, you can select anywhere you want in your machine. So what we, I will do is I'll create a new folder here and I'll call it M1.2 for module 1.2 and select this folder. So I came to browse, selected my user. I actually create a new folder and call it that. Okay, actually, I didn't select. Jeez. And I'm going to give it the simulation a name. Uh, as I have already kind of spo spoiled, the simple simulation is actually not biology, it's foams. Uh, the evolution of bubbles in a foam and how they behave. So give it a name foam simulation or foam scene. Then we are presented with this next page, which sets up characteristics for the uh, simulation domain, how many pixels it has um, in three dimensions. If we, left, if we leave Z as one, it's gonna be 2D, which is what we want. Uh, we can leave these as the default. Uh, Python plus XML. And um, in here, just which is the default. Um, Python only out would also work, but I find it harder to do some things. And what we'll do is we'll change the boundary conditions from no flux to periodic. Uh, the numbers here mean how many pixels each direction have. So we're going to have 256 pixels on X, 256 on Y. And since it's one dimension, we only have one Z pixel. And the change here to periodic, what it means is with no flux, the edges of the simulation are walls. With periodic, 
they wrap around. So you, if you leave from one side of the simulation, you appear on the other side, which you can maybe see here with the old video game from the 70s of, or 80s, Asteroids, where the asteroids and the spaceship can leave the simulated domain in one side and they appear in the other, right? And since we are in 2D, uh, we just leave the Z as no flux. Uh, it shouldn't change anything in the behavior of the simulation, but don't quote me on that. Um, okay, so, and there's one more thing that we're gonna change here. Uh, James mentioned that I did that CompuCell is pixel-based, cells occupy a number of pixels. And CompuCell, the way CompuCell works is it tries to change the owners of each pixel. And it has a range to try, for which it tries to change those pixels. So this set to one means that it's range is one. So it's only, and here it's only gonna try. So here we have two cells, gray and white. And in, with range one, it will only try to change this pixel by the ones marked one here. So north, south, east, and west. With two, it's gonna do the diagonals as well. With three, it's gonna go two out. Um, in the straight line and so on. We are gonna change this to two for our foam simulation. And we're gonna go to the next step. which is defining our cell types. Almost everything in CompuCell is considered a cell, even our non-cells, which in this case are bubbles. So we need to add the bubble type to the cell types. And we just give it a name and hit add here. Um, and if you make a mistake, you can just clear the table and do it again. Uh, yes, it is creating a class, but don't worry about it. It's simplified. Um, so back from the beginning, give it a name, select the folder you want to save your simulation in, La leave the X and Y dimension and Z dimensions as is, so 256, 256, one, change X and Y to be periodic and change the copy range to two. And now we add one cell type of bubble. And the next step, well, would be creating chemical fields if we were going to use any. We, don't, we are not. So we can just skip this. Okay, so pixel order is this. So there is a gray cell here and a white cell. CompuCell selected this pixel to try to change the owner of it from gray to white. And the range tells us which pixels it can select to do the change attempt. With one, it's only gonna be north, south, east, west. With two, it's gonna be those four plus the diagonals. With three, it's gonna go, well, those eight points plus two, two steps north, two steps west, and so on. And for adds more of the diagonal and that balloons out. 
and that's also true for hexagonal lattices, which I'm not going to use, but you can use hexagonal pixels in CompuCell. Oops. So the steps were name and place, uh, setting both of these to periodic, setting the range to two, setting a cell time for our bubbles. After all, we need them to exist. No chemical fields for this demo. And finally, we come into cell properties and behaviors. And the only one we need is contact. And this is why this is the simplest CompuCell simulation. We are only adding one restriction to our cells, which is they sense the contact with each other. And that's pretty much it. After we hit finish, uh, to edit, we'll, have, we'll generate all the files we need to, well, run the simulation. So finish. So popped up here on the left. Uh, we are not going to use any chemical fields. So just hit next on that page without adding anything. And we can double click here on the left and it's gonna open the three files that build our simulation. The two important files is the XML and the one that has steppables as part of its name. We are gonna spend 90% of our time during the whole week looking at steppables files. And for uh, plugins, if I walk through again. So chemical fields leave empty, only one cell type. And cell properties, we only need contact here, which is the very first on the top left plugin, cell properties and behaviors. That's that's all it's here as well. And that's all we need to run. We actually can right click here the CC3D file on the left and hit open in player, and it's going to open the simulation here. And so one bug with NanoHub that James mentioned is exactly this. We can see that the borders here on my player are not really, well, they are not aligned down here. So if I just wiggle this, it redraws everything. So, and one thing that we're gonna change on this XML is the initial layout of cells. So if I just hit step here and wiggle so that it resizes, the cells are in a square inside the square. Uh, we actually want the um, bubbles, not cells, to fill the whole of the pixel lattice. So here on the XML, uh, we have several options of things that we've defined already. Um, and we can change simulation properties here, like the size of the lattice. Uh, we can change those here. If we want to make it 3D, we just change Z here. 
we could define more cell types. Um, we have the contact energy in between cells. Uh, and we are not going to mess around with any of that. The only thing we are going to mess with is this final part, which is the uniform initializer. As you can guess from the name initializer, it initializes a group of cell in a region here. Right now it's going from pixel 51 to fix pixel 204 on X and same thing on Y. We actually wanted to go from zero to 256 on X and Y. Uh, yes, yes. If you have a two, uh, one, two, two, eight size, you do one, two, eight. And uh, here we can also change the initial size of the cells. Uh, you may only see, be seeing black because if I let this run, the cells will disappear. Well, the bubbles will disappear. They are not cells. A uh, good question on Boxmin. I was wondering the same thing as I was typing here. I, I, I never remember if this is zero indexed or not, but there's a quick way to see it, which is just set zero and 256. And if CompuCell complains, we know that we did it wrong. And again, I have to wiggle, but it seemed to be happy with going from zero to 256. And another option with uh, the region here is that it allows us to set the initial size of the cells. Here they start with seven, but if I wanted to, I could put this to 20. And we can see that the cells are tiny squares there with size seven. But if I hit stop and tell it to start again, the cells are way bigger. And the simulation behaves like this because we only set the contact energy. We, computers are not dumb, but literal. We didn't tell CompuCell that the cells, well, that not cells we made should have a target volume, so they don't. But they have a contact energy, and CompuCell is trying to minimize the energy. So it's going to try to go to energy zero, which is nothing being present. And I could also, uh, but going back to cell size, I could go down to width two as well. And this is actually a better situation for this particular model to have as tiny bubbles as we can to start. And here we go. Uh, in this simulation, there is conservation of mass if we start with the whole of space occupied by bubbles. If we don't, there still is conservation of mass, but it's air bubbles being turned into medium, right? The blackness is medium. But yeah, here on the region, change from zero to 256 on X and Y and change the in initial width of our bubbles to two. You could also do one. It would also work if you want. And if you need to stop a simulation, here's the stop and play. And NanoHub is being really insistent with this rendering bug. And here we have our cell, our bubbles coarsening. Uh, 
is the whole player going black or the cell visualization going black? Huh. That is interesting with Twitter still working. I don't know, TJ? Uh, this might be an issue of needing to terminate the tool and then restarting it. Yeah. I've seen this a couple of times with a few. Um, yeah, there's uh, another reported issue. So if you have this issue, um, probably the most straightforward way to fix it would be to terminate the tool, which you can see in the top right of Giuliano's screen and probably yours. Um, and then just restart the tool. Um, it should take you back to your main profile page, um, in which case on the right-hand side of the screen, yeah, in Giuliano's list of my tools, you should find the CompuCell main tool should be at, probably at the top of that list. And just relaunch, restart, and try again. Hopefully this uh, issue will resolve as we progress through the week. I don't know, it's probably easier if you select recent, then you'll see the one that you want. True, true. Yeah, if you launched Compuser already, recent. Uh, and I recommend putting hearts on the tools that you want. That way it's going to be here on favorites as well. But back to here. Uh, as we can see, the bubbles got really big. And some of them are still growing and some are shrinking. So here's the first graph that we are going to do. We are going to plot the number of bubbles from this huge number to however many there are at the end. And uh, what we can see here in the behavior is that some bubbles grow, some shrink. And this is a Non problem with a known solution that I'm not going to get into, but suffice to say that bubbles with many neighbors grow and bubbles with few neighbors shrink, and big bubbles get bigger and small bu bubbles get smaller. Sure, there is some. Thing to be said there. So. We are going before we actually go to the creation of a plot. I'm going to make a small parenthesis. I've mentioned that we are going to spend most of the time. Um, if your bubbles disappear until you have nothing, you probably haven't set the region to be the whole of the simulation domain. But as I said, we are going to be looking at steppables most of the time. And I thought it would be interesting to do a quick rundown of them. Um, TJ went over classes yesterday. And we can see that this is a class. It has a init function, a start function, a step function, a finish, and a on stop. All of these are special functions for CompuCell steppables, which are classes that inherit from this class. And init and start happen before time. So init um, happens even before start. We are not going to use it for much, although I will use it in this class. And start happens just before step zero. So we need and start are good places to set parameters. Say if I was in a simulation of cells growing by consuming nutrient, I could define the parameter for growth here in the start by having cell growth rate equals to some number five. And then I could use the self growth rate here in step to make the cells grow somehow. 
this will be more apparent with other examples. Then this step, as the name suggests, happens every time step. And it's the series of commands that are gonna be issued every time. And this is where we are gonna prepare our data for plotting afterwards. And finally finish, it's what happens after the final step. And on stop is what happens if you click stop here. Uh, they are very similar. Um, we usually use them to close data files that we ha may have been using um, and things like that. And what I usually do is from either one of these, I call the other. So inside of on stop, what I will do is I'll just type self.finish. This will call the finish function if I stop the simulation early. But this is just a parenthesis. Oh, yeah. And final thing, uh, you can have many more steppable classes. Uh, as we are going to see throughout the weekend, this class, to edit knows how. So in this case, we'd go to the CC3D Python menu, which has a bunch of submenus and commands, and click Add Steppable to add another steppable. Not going to do this now, but that's pretty much it. In this way, you could have a steppable that handles data, one steppable that handles one aspect of cell behavior, say one steppable for cell growth, one steppable for mitosis, one steppable for handling cell death, and so on. But again, for this lecture, we are only going to use one steppable in which we are going to do everything. So we are going to start by doing line plots. Here, here I have some examples. This is actually also a foam simulation, but instead of being dry, like here, it's actually wet. It has some liquid in between the bubbles there. And again, to add it knows how. So to add a plot, the first thing is we come to the start function. We place our cursor, cursor inside of it and make sure that the indentation level is correct. If we look here, we can see that there are there is this line and then here. This is two tab spaces. Then, to edit knows how, we come to CC3 Python, scientific plots, and setup, which is done in the start. And after we click that, oops, scientific plots set up, we click that and to edit pasted a bunch of things here. Um, let me know if my font size is too small. Um, it's already going to be kind of hard to see things. So the nice thing about Python is that it cares about indentations if you're not inside a parenthesis. So here I'm just gonna remove all the spaces and put things in different lines since I'm inside a set of parentheses so that things are easier to see. So again, this is 3 Python scientific plots setup, which should be in the start function. And it's gonna paste all of these. So this series of commands are, well, this first one adds a plot window, a new one, 
and it assigns this name plot win for a plot window to it. It's titling this plot window with this string and it's titling the axes and setting uh, X and Y to be either linear or log. And you can also set a grid on the plot to be there or not. And so this sets a plot window. These set inside that plot window, they add a plot series. In this case, we'll, these commands are adding two plot series. Maybe that's more easier to see. Um, so this is adding two plot series to the plot window. And it's calling one of them mvol and the other msur for volume and surface. And it's setting the style for the plot, what color it should be, the thickness of the lines or dots. And in our case, we are not caring right now about the volume of the bubbles, but the, so we can, and we are only gonna plot one plot series to this plot window. So first things first, I'm going to comment out the second one here by going to the beginning of the line and adding a pound or hash or quadruple plus whatever you want to call that symbol. And other things that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the title of the plot window to reflect what we are actually plotting. Um, so the title is going to be number of bubbles. Um, the X uh, title is going to keep uh, is going to stay Monte Carlo step since that's what we are doing. Uh, y axis, um, we can well probably change it to n or something, and we are going to change both x and y to be long, and we are going to activate the grid. So on the add plot window, changing the title, changing y axis title, both scales to be log and activating grid. I commented out the second command to add a plot series to the plot window. And the only thing I'm gonna change here is the title to be N as well. And Noah, we plan on posting the full chat log to uh, Slack afterwards. Yes. Uh, this uh, is on the start function here. Uh, and actually, to edit knows how, if we go to scientific plot, it says there, start function. The setup should be in the start function. There are some other things that we're going to get to later that should be in the init function. But again, to edit will give a hint of where it should be.
Let's move some spaces here. So if I hit run now, I make it redrawn. Ta-da. The plot window shows up. And here it becomes useful to come into window tile. But as of now, we are not actually plotting anything. It's just the window is there. And we can check that the window is there. So the next step is to come into the step function, which is where we are actually going to add the commands to pass data to our plot. Uh, by default, Compucell will have added this loop over the cells that exist, and it's going to print some stuff. We can leave that be for now. And before it, again, check the indentation level. Uh, we are going to come to CC3 Python, scientific plots, and add data points. And we can see that this one should be in the step function. So CC3 Python, scientific plots, add data points. And again, let me make things more visible by adding some new lines inside parentheses. As long as they are inside parentheses, all is good. And we are going to change these. So this is telling the plot window to add a data point. And the way it knows which plot series to add the data point to is by the time series title. Like here we have msur, which is one of the titles that was there, but we commented out. So in our case, again, we don't have msur. So commenting those commands out. You could also delete them if you wish. And we are not, we don't have a mvol series, we have a n series. So replace that by n. And we need to decide what, well, we are gonna plot the number of bubbles. We need to, that is gonna be here. Just gonna place that now there for now. Uh, we need to determine what the number is. And one final important thing actually is this MCS here. We are gonna keep the MCS there, but we've set the X scale to be log. And the first MCS is zero. So log of zero, it's going to be a problem. So what we do is instead of passing MCS, we do MCS plus one. Problem solved. And the way we determine this number of bubbles here, well, is by realizing we only have bubbles. And we have a list of cells, which is all bubbles. And for people that are familiar with Python or came to yesterday's bootcamp, you know that there is a quick and easy way to get the length of a list. And since the list is of all the bubbles we have, the length of the list is the number of bubbles we have. So instead of number of B here, we're going to have length for the length of some list. And the list we want is already present here. Ta-da. So again, for this part, we placed our cursor in the step. 
ask Threaded how to do stuff, scientific plots, at data point, commented out the second command, replaced the title to N, which is the title we used before, added one to MCS to avoid taking the log of zero, and we're getting the number of bubbles by getting the length of the cell list, which is the list of all bubbles. And now if we go back here and hit play, there we go. And you know, um, there seems to be a bug in the most recent version of a comp cell that if we do log scales on the plot, it will print infs, infinities, where it's not infinity. But I assure you that even though the display is wrong, the data here is right. So you can see that there was a huge drop off at the start and then a slower drop off afterwards. And yeah, again, the infs are showing up on the MCS, which it shouldn't. Uh, yes, I tried using the shortcut to comment out lines here on NanoHub as well, and it's not working for me too. I think it's only a NanoHub bug. I think NanoHub sometimes has issues with um, keyboard commands because it doesn't know if you are doing it on your machine or if you are trying to do it inside this environment that NanoHub has. has. So maybe this is too big of a drop to actually see anything useful. So what we could do, yep, we can do linear as well. Just changing, uh, the inf is a bug with the most recent version of CompuCell in log scale. So just change those logs to linear. And if we do it again, stop. And we go. Yeah, so the inf bug is with log scale. A new tile, hit tile there. If you can, you show them the right click for uh, adjusting the. Let's see if that works. And yeah, let's change. Mentioning. Uh, we can right click the plot. And where is it? Uh, there is a way to change the log from here. Y axis should work. See if it works. Try link access should be no okay. uh, here. It's plot options transform. That's right. It's and gray yeah, it's grayed out for some reason. Okay. Not sure why. But in any case, putting that back, back to log, even in log scale, the change in magnitude was huge. So what we could do as well is well, we can see that this drop is really at the start, and afterwards it tapers off. After all, there aren't there that many cells to disappear at this point as well. So what we could do is at some point during the simulation at a specific time step, say MCS 300, we could ask to edit how to erase what we've plotted, and that we will erase all the data. Um, 
in the plot and well start fresh so what i've done there here is uh, at time 300 mcs is the usual name for time step in cellular plots models so at time 200 i'm clearing my plot and it's gonna well continue plotting from there so now if i hit run again and wiggle soon enough we're gonna see that line disappear and reappear and now it's more well behaved and we could actually try to fit a trend line and here in log scale it would be somewhat linear which is to be expect expected for foam bubbles um well uh, we did we didn't name the plot win to plot win we named it self plot win so and here we have self plot win but that should be what what it did by default and how to erase all data i've created this if by hand which is just if mcs equals equals 300 then i placed my cursor inside the if and to edit knows how oops cc3 python what is going on cc3 python scientific plots and erase plot if we wanted to plot every 100 time steps instead it, we would just do something similar with a if statement on the MCS. And if the MCS, well, you do something like if MCS modulo your frequency 100 is zero. Oops. Do this. But yeah, you can control time. Well, you can control when things happen by using the variable for time. Yep. And that's how you do line plots. Pretty easy. Does the hover over allow you to do the CSV save? later mcs is time and yeah if i wanted to plot every 10 mcs i do MC if mcs modulo 10 is zero and place this inside of that if. Yes, there is a way to get the number of neighbors, and uh, that is a exercise later. But it's it's real easy. It's gonna be similar to getting the length of a list. It's not gonna be the cell list, but still. Um, you don't have a colon after three hundred there. So Python doesn't know what to do. Uh, 
and I mentioned that we can do, well, we've done a line plot. And the next thing we will do is a histogram in a few. Uh, do you have this before the add plot? So the way to do this is not by hand or copying what I'm doing, is asking to edit to do this. So cc 3 d Python, scientific plots, setup for the start. And same idea here, cc 3 Python scientific plots at data points. And histograms are quite similar. You may have noticed that there are scientific plots here and then scientific plots histograms. And if you are finished, you could try to figure it out how to do the histograms already. It's almost the same. So the way to do this is to come back to the start function, uh, place your cursor anywhere um, after we've created this plot window. So after this commented out lines we have here, and again, ask to edit. cc 3 d Python, scientific plot histograms, add a histogram plot. So again, cc 3 d Python, on to edit, scientific plot histograms, add histogram plot. Let me make things more visible here. So in this uh, example code from to edit, as before, it was doing two line plots on the same plot window. And here it's making three histograms in the same plot window. Um, and in here, we are gonna have to change a few more things than we did before which, well, to start, we can't call it plotwin. We already used this handle for the plot window that we did before. So if we try to use the same handle, at the very least, some unwanted behavior will happen. So instead of plot window, let's, I don't know, change it to hist window for histogram window. And we also need to be careful that all of these three histograms that are going to be plotted on the window also need, also need to reference the correct handle. So just, you know, replace plot, uh, plot win here by hist win everywhere. So that's one thing. Um, the next thing is that for the example that I'm going to do, the X and Y titles are reversed. So I actually want X to be volume size in pixels. So I'm just gonna cut that string and paste it here. And then, oops, cut this string and paste it here.
And finally, since we are, we are only going to do one histogram, so I'm going to comment out the lines that create the second and third histograms. And again, to get started, it's uh, cc 3 Python scientific plot histograms and a histogram plot. I'm going to carry on. And so, as the titles of the axis um, spoil, we are going to histogram the cell volumes. We already have a. We already have the loop over cell list, so we only need to record those volumes into a separate list, and then pass that list to the histogram. So here before the loop, I'm going to create a list, call it poll list or whatever you want. And to create an empty list, it's this a set of open and closing brackets. And then inside of this loop, actually going to comment out the sprint. We don't need it. And then I want to access the cell volume. And that one is easy to remember after all, cell volume. But if you don't, Twitter so knows how, CC3 Python, cell attributes, cell volume down here. Then what I'll do is instead of recording that to a variable, I'm going to grab my list here and I'm going to append to it this value. So we are li we're listing all of the cell volumes separately. And again, it's cell.volume, but for more complicated named things, uh, to edit knows how, CCG Python cell attributes. And finally, we only need to pass that over to the histogram. So same as we did with the line plot, I go to CCTV Python scientific plots histograms, add a histogram. So this would be a mistake because even though I place my cursor here on the correct indentation level, to edit insisted in putting the comments inside the loop. So this would not actually create the histogram we want. So I'm just gonna remove the extra indentation. And again, we only have one histogram in the plot. So I'm going to comment out the next two commands. And I'm going to make things more visible here. And what the other thing that we need to do is okay, um, give me one moment. Sorry about that, my cat was about to drop a glass on the floor. Um, the other thing we need to do is use the correct handle. Right now it's using the handle plot win by default, which is not the plot window we want. We want, where is it? It's back on the start, hist win. we we'll just change plot win for hist win. And then the value array, it's not Gauss, whatever the example 
was doing, but volume list. And that's it. We are gonna have a histogram now. If I come back to here, hit stop. And hit step and wiggle. A new window appears for the histogram. Uh, the values are being overwritten. So the whole of the step function is done every time step. So if you notice here, just before the loop over cells, I'm empty. I'm recreating the list as being empty or setting the whole of it to be an empty list. So it's drawing out the values from the previous time step before saving the new values. And now since I have another window, I'm gonna go here and tile again. And we are gonna notice that, well, this would be mod, uh, one thing that is more no noticeable with bigger cells is that they do start around the volume that you start them at, and then they gonna have this more spread out distribution. And this is also a, Typical result for bubbles, the distribution of volumes is a log normal. But that's besides the example. And one difference of the line plot and the histogram is that the line plot keeps adding points and the histogram resets every time step. Now you know how to do histograms as well. Oh, I'm probably gonna have to go over as well. Hi. Okay, and the histogram is not scanning the cells. We are scanning the cells here and we are getting their volumes, listing them all in this fall list. And then the only thing that the histogram knows about is this list and how many bins we want to have. So you could change the number of bins here as well. And the histogram will look a bit different. And one thing that was kind of mentioned during the class is that we can right click this plots and do stuff with them. In particular, export. So we can export them as a image file, PNG, TIFF, JPEG. Uh, you can set the, the size of the image. And what the background color should be. Then you hit export and you select where you want to save it. So foam number and hit save. And that crashed CompuCell for me. Nice. But if, if it hadn't crashed, it would have saved the image. I promise you that. Um, and you can also save it as CSV there. And same deal, you click CSV, hit export, select where to save. Yeah, I'm, as soon as CompuCell loads again, I'm gonna try to do it if CompuCell doesn't crash on me again. Here we go, you run for a while. So export, and now I'm gonna try to exploit it as 
export as CSV data and export, select a folder under my username and give it a name and hit save and it didn't crash. And that's it for saving data. There's one final thing for this class, but I realize I only have two minutes. So I'm not sure if I should do it or not, but it would be the question of counting neighbors. Um, I think that's probably too much for now. Yep. Um, but that means we have to make sure that that's covered then in the next module. Well, I'm going to leave you with some homework then. Well, I'm going to show you how to count neighbors, and then I'm going to leave you with some homework. How's that? So the and way to can, do it. Sorry, Juliana, but while you're doing that, if people could fill out the module questionnaire while we're going ahead, that would be very helpful. Thank you. So one thing is we actually need a plugin to count the neighbors. So we need to go to the XML and place our cursor anywhere as long as it's not inside a opening and closing tag. And Twedit knows how. In this case, it's CC3D ML for XML. And we want a plugin called cell neighbors neighbor tracker here. So we need to add that. And to get the list of cell neighbors, we come here to the loop over cells and ask to edit how, since it's a Python visit, since we're visiting the neighbors, cell neighbors. And to actually count the neighbors, we'd only need to get the length of this here. So again, we need to add the neighbor tracker by coming to the XML outside any open and closing uh, tags. CC3DML, plugins, neighbor tracker. And in here, inside the loop of ourselves, we ask Twedit on how to visit their neighbors by going to the cc 3 Python menu and visit cell neighbors. And then the number of neighbors is the length of this list here. And you could add a histogram for the number of neighbors. You could add, which is part of the homework, you could add a histogram of the cell growth based on number of neighbors and so on. That's all. Yes, the visiting neighbors is on the Python. So, CC3 Python is for Python. So we need, we actually do the visit in Python inside the cell loop. CC3 Python visit cell neighbors. But to actually, be able to do this, we need to have the neighbor tracker plugin loaded up. And to load a plugin, that is on the XML. So in the XML, we go to outside 
uh, anywhere outside uh, opening and closing tags and cc3ml for XML, plugins, neighbor tracker. That's all for now. Yes, we will now break for lunch. I hope things went well and that you got something out of the lecture. <laughs>